to bless the Lord for this opportunity to stand before you. Have you enjoyed what Pastor Francis was teaching in the first session? Actually, it's not a session, it's a Bible study. It's an exposition of the word. Have you enjoyed it? Nikikuuliza unipatia five things that you have learned today. Utanipatia? Eh? Nikikuambi ufunge notebook unipatia five things that you have learned. Eh? Chikiwe nyoto wana karam sahi. Hallelujah. Everyone who's going to be speaking in this conference most likely will be speaking out of the book of Ephesians. Um, and uh, I am going to speak to us about one specific topic. And I'm going to pick it from Ephesians and also another portion of scripture. If you can't be able, do you have your Bibles with you? Do you have your Bibles with you? All right. If you could go, please... Uh, Go with me to Ephesians chapter number one. I know probably you have read it in the morning. Ephesians chapter number one, verse number one to six. I'm going to read. Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God, to the saints in Ephesus, the faithful in Christ Jesus, grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm reading from NIV. Verse number three. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in heavenly realms with every spiritual blessing in Christ. For he chose us. He did what? In him before the creation of the world to be holy and blameless. To be what? Tell your neighbor, neighbor, you were chosen to be holy and blameless. In his sight. It continues to say, in love he predestined, he predestined us to be adopted as his sons through Jesus Christ. He predestined us to be what? To be what? To be adopted. NIV. To be what? He predestined us to be adopted as his sons through Jesus Christ. Through who? In accordance with his, his pleasure and will. Verse number six. To the praise of his glorious grace, which he has freely given us in the one he loves. Just those six verses, I'm going to give you three things. Number one, I'm going to go very fast because of time. And there's a lot of uh, work that we have to do today. Number one, just three facts from that scripture alone. Number one, I was chosen to be holy. If you have your notebook, I am sure most of us, if not all of us, have a notebook and a pen. Number one, I was chosen to be holy. It's right there in those scriptures. Number two, I was predestined for adoption as a son. Number one, I was chosen to be holy. Number two, I was predestined for adoption as a son. Number three, I was redeemed by his blood. Number three, I was redeemed through his, Jesus, his blood. I was redeemed through the blood of Jesus. Those are very important things and uh, what you're going to be talking about today is based on those three facts. And for number one and number two, fact number one and fact number two to happen, fact number three had to take place. And that's why we are talking about redemption. What is to be redeemed? Wasea po hivyo mezo kuridim bonga points. Correct? Yo kuridim ni nini? Amo mune itu bianga kusabu safari kom ili yanzisha. So what is redemption? Redemption is a simple, simple, it's a complex, probably complex statement to mean buying back. It's a simple thing. Meaning, meaning to buy back. It once was yours, it was taken away, now you're buying it back. That's what redemption is. Amen. What I'm hoping to do, my, object, my objectives are for, for this, for this, for this uh, teaching today is number one, to know the reason why you were redeemed. And number two, to restructure our response to redemption. To reconstitute our response to why we are redeemed. Number one, I want to give you reasons why this redemption had to take place. And number two, I want to restructure your ideas in your mind and your heart for the response of why you are redeemed. Hallelujah. How many of us here are born again? 
inua mkono eka mkono chini how many of us are really really sure that you were born again inua mkono eka mkono chini how many of us are really 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 sure that you were born again inua mkono awesome put your hand down that's good if i could ask you why you were born again i'm not sure what answers you will give me what i'm sure of that that one's answer and this one's answer and this one's answer will be different somehow and that's why we have to tell us guys what happened to you 9 years ago 3 years ago 1 year ago 3 months ago what happened to you was the most important decision that you have ever made in your life and the reason why is what we are going to speak about today somebody say amen, amen. hallelujah amen you cannot appreciate redemption without appreciating two things you cannot appreciate redemption without appreciating two things number one, the first thing that you have to appreciate is the holiness of god and number two is something that is going to be spoken about later by my friend the sinfulness of sin and the extent of sin of man so number one, you've got to appreciate how holy god is number two, you've got to appreciate how unholy eh, we are so that you can appreciate redemption tunasonga tu vizuri amen so the first topic subtopic simlienda shule muna understand subtopic the first subtopic subtopic i'm going to talk about is the holiness of god amen how holy is god it's interesting because uh, the praise and worship team today has sung about the holiness of god and we are worshiping god as a holy god si tumeimba hivyo si tumeimba hivyo sahi au mshasahau you are holy holy are you lord god almighty si tumeimba hiyo song I want us to appreciate how holy this God is so that you can learn what redemption is all about. Are you with me? Isaiah chapter number 6 verse 1 to 6. Isaiah chapter number 6 verse 1 to 6. Something interesting happens to Isaiah. Very interesting. I want us to read in chorus 3 go. In the year that King Uzziah died, seated on a throne high and exalted and the train of his robe filled the temple above him were seraphs each with six wings with two wings they covered their faces with two they covered their feet and with two they were flying and they were calling to one another holy 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 is the lord almighty the earth is full goja guy where kidogo tu rudi tu hapo Holy 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 let's go is the lord almighty the whole earth is full of his glory at the sound of their voices the doorposts and thresholds shook and the temple was filled with smoke agoja 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 send number 5 tuna come tuna come hiyo ndio subtopic number 2 Amen. Let's go to verse number 4. Actually go to verse number 3. Let's discuss about this. Isaiah is in a place where God reveals himself in a way where he has not yet revealed himself to him. Hallelujah. So he he reveals himself in a certain way to show Isaiah a certain thing. Now, we young people are not so much conversant with the Old Testament, especially the prophetic books. Isaiah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, Daniel, Hosea, Joel, Amos, Obadiah. Hizo atkwangi tunakaribia sana. Waga tunakaribia nga Galatians. Of course, and the ladies wana karibia nga Psalms. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Aki kio kichali. Kitajua mungu wangu. Anyway. Um, we are not so conversant about this. But I, I want to bring us to this place. So that we can, we can appreciate what this salvation is all about. Amen. So Isaiah is brought to a place to see in particular the holiness of God. And a picture or a vision or whatever it is of seraphs were given to him. Give me that scripture. What seraphs was given to him and the seraphs were doing something. 
they were looking to God and they said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord Almighty. The whole earth is full of his glory. Now, when scripture repeats a word, scripture repeats a word. For example, Jesus says, Verily, verily, I say unto you. Why does scripture repeat a word? It repeats a word for emphasis sake. It repeats a word twice for emphasis sake. But it's only once in the Bible that scripture has repeated a word three times following one another. And it's in the attribute of the holiness of God that scripture has repeated the word holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. It is only the attribute of the holiness of God that has been repeated the most times in the Bible. We will never see in the Bible, wise, wise, wise is the Lord Almighty. You will never see strong, strong, strong is the Lord Almighty. But you will see twice, I think, or thrice or something. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. When God is giving the Israelites uh, the law, do this for I am a holy God. Do this for I am a holy God. I am a holy God who brought you out to the hand of, uh, of the Egyptians. Because I am a holy God, do this and this and this and this. The attribute of the holiness of God. And many of us do not want to associate so much with that attribute. Yet the Bible says, Pastor Shadi, the Bible says, be holy. For I am holy. And the Bible continues to say, for without holiness, no one shall see God. Think about that statement. The first thing in the holiness of God that Isaiah saw, number one, is his all-surpassing majesty. His all-surpassing majesty. What do I mean? The Bible says, and he was seated on a throne. And many of us understand thrones because you have seen epic movies. So you know those movies, Akitambo. And the one who sits on a throne is a king. And his train, the train of his robe, filled the temple. Correct? Correct? The train of his robe filled the temple. Is that true? Who wears a train? Number one, a bride. Sindio? When you kifanyika. Number one, a bride. But Kitambo, the people who used to wear a robe and a train following that robe was a king and the longer the train the more powerful the king hallelujah when queen elizabeth ii was ascending into her throne that train was 36 feet long it took six six maidens to carry that train it took six maidens it was actually very heavy it would be a sign of the majesty that follows the queen. The Bible tells me about Isaiah and what he saws. That the train of his robe did what? Filled the temple. It was a huge thing. It was a powerful thing that he saw. And there was smoke. And the presence of the Lord was power. The first thing that Isaiah realized about this. This is not a man to joke with. This is not a guy to joke with. Hallelujah. The first thing he saw was the sovereignty of God. Now, the word sovereign means that he is all in himself powerful. All in himself governing. He is the administrator of heaven and earth. That's the picture that Isaiah saw about the king of glory. He is sovereign above everything. In other words, as concerns heaven and earth and everything seen and unseen, he is government. What is government? The three arms of government. Number one, Nigani, GHC, social nini, yo, inetangwaje squeezy, social yo, GHC, three arms of government. Number one, legislature. In other words, God, God by himself creates, forms the law that guides heaven and earth. Can I make an announcement to you? Even gravity, thank you. I'm a... I'm from Jacob. Can I make an announcement to you this morning? God does not serve your interests. God does not serve the desires that you have. He is sovereign and makes the law of the land. 
Hallelujah. That's why you have the Bible. He is legislature all by himself. Number two, God is execution. See, see the first one is legislature. The second one is executive. Who constitutes the executive? All civil servants and the police and the army and all that. In other words, they enforce the law. So God all by himself stands in heaven and enforces the law and tells you, if you do not do this, I will come upon you seriously. As long as someone has a crown on his akifanyia law hivi, hata kama yeye ni recruit, wale wasa wa kwanza wanaikangwa kwa akisimamisha trailer 24 wheel, trailer hivi. It doesn't matter how big the trailer is. Who deliver tasimama. Hallelujah. In other words, as concerns heaven and earth, God enforces law. If you want to know very well that God enforces law, ask Nebuchadnezzar. Okay, ask Pharaoh who dared defy what God wanted. Hallelujah. Amen. God enforces law. And by the way, he will not twist the law to fulfill the desires of your heart. God will not twist the law so that you can get a boyfriend or a girlfriend. Because it is the desire of your heart. Because God fulfills the desires of our... Eh, 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 eh. That God forms the law. Hallelujah. And after he forms the law, he executes it upon men who he himself has created. That's why he said, I alone you shall serve and you shall have no other God before me. Hallelujah. Number three, one of my favorites. Number three, ni? Munaijua, ni? What is judiciary? Number one, the function, the first function of judiciary, it rewards good. And the second function of judiciary, it punishes evil. Ah, buona sana. Eh? God punishes what is wrong. Nakuja tu. Nakuja tu pole pole. Hallelujah. So the first thing that Isaiah sees is the sovereignty of God. The second thing that Isaiah sees in that one vision is the moral perfect standing that God has. God has a moral perfect stand before men. Hallelujah. I, buona sue sana. God is morally perfect. And I have another announcement to make. Your morally best days are like filth to God. Ile siku unasikianga ni kama maze ume worship, ume karibia binguni. Hallelujah. Without the blood of Jesus. Atume worship unasikia, eh maze leo ka worship ka meshika. Nasikia ni kama ni me karibia bingu. Iyo siku. Guess what? Without this thing that we call redemption. Your morally best days. Unajua ile siku ume behave poor. Hadu unesaka approach mazako with confidence. So we are about approaching the throne of God with. Uh, there is a reason why Pastor Francis was speaking about it. You as yourself. Ile siku ume approach God. God unajua venja leo nime kusavu maze. Leo maze nime amka mapema. Nika kuja nika osha church. Eh, leo nime amka mapema. Siuka una feel morally uko tu sawa. Aujatena mzile madhambi za siri. Unasikia tu within yourself. And all that is within you. Unasikia uko tu sawa. Isaiah 64 verse number 6. Same Isaiah 64 verse number 6. And my righteous acts are like filthy rags. Think about that statement. All of us, imagine, uni Isaiah, by the way, all of us have become like what? One who is, underline the word unclean, we are going to use it. One who is unclean. And all our, all our what? So all your worship. All your giving, all your obedience, everything that you think is moral before God, all our righteous acts are like filthy rags. We, are sh we all shrivel up like a leaf and like the wind, our what? Our what? Underline the word sins. Someone is going to be talking about that. And, the, uh, and, and like the wind, our sins sweep us away. Hallelujah. Number three, the, three, the third thing, that 
Isaiah saw number three, number one was all surpassing majesty. Number two, perfect moral purity. Number three, his hatred of sin. In ile message wa sota kanyu kusikia sana. His hatred of sin. God hates sin with equal measure, whether large or small. So when you stand before God, you are jealous because of your friend's makeup. And this other person who is here has killed his brother. Before God, you are all the same, condemned. I want to make this point clear. Before a God, before our God, you are both condemned. Amen. The guilt of sin or offense is proportional to the greatness and the glory of him against whom the offense is committed. The guilt of sin is proportional to the greatness and glory of him against whom the sin or the offense is committed. So it's not about whether society has accepted it as a sin or not. No. It is about whom you have sinned against. Hallelujah. If you go and jump over the fence of your neighbor and steal chicken, and you steal chicken, and you go with it, and you are caught of stealing, most likely, most likely, you will not make the 9 o'clock news. But like my Jaquat counterpart, who went and jumped over the fence of State House. Same act. Jump over the fence of State House. Same act. Verily, verily, I say unto you, you will make the nine o'clock news. Why? What's the difference? A neighbor's fence and State House's fence. What's the difference? The difference is the greatness and the glory of the person whom you have sinned against. When David in Psalms number 51 says, Against you, God, have I sinned. There was a difference on, of what he said and a difference between what Judas said. Judas aliangalevi akasema, We? Nimetenda thambi. But David, alijua ni nani ame mtendea thambi. He's the Lord, sovereign God. So the repentance of David... Hallelujah. The repentance that David did, he, he knew exactly whom he has sinned against. It's not your mother you have sinned against. By the way, it's not your folks that you have sinned against. It's, it's not yourself that you have sinned against. You have sinned against your creator when you sin. Amen. I want to say sana. Tunakuja vizuri. Amen. It is him whom you have sinned against that causes you to be condemned in your guilt. That brings me to the second subtopic, the sinfulness of sin. Someone is going, kuna mtu atengia too deep hapa hivindani, but let's talk about it again, just a bit. Isaiah chapter number 6, verse number 5. Isaiah 6, verse number 5. So after he saw all that, the reaction was this. Everyone, let's read together. Three, go. Woe to me, I cried. I am, I am what? For I am a man of unclean lips, and I live among a people of unclean lips. And what? Have seen the king, the Lord Almighty. This is the same reaction Peter had. When he saw Jesus, do you remember that day when Peter saw Jesus? After Jesus told him, Rusha uku kuingine. Alafu wakashika samaki wengi. And Peter saw something. He saw, my eyes have seen the king, yet I'm a man who is unclean. It's the same thing that Peter saw. By the way, it is the same thing Apostle John sees in Revelation chapter number one. 
Eh, aposto, eh? Unasikia vile tunaita inaita majina mzito mzito. Who? Aposto. So an aposto, a disciple and a prophet when they are revealed to the holiness of God. What is the reaction? How I pray that you shall be revealed to just a glimpse of who this God is that you worship and you serve. Na kuambia reaction yako. Uwe hata jirani atajua. Atajua huyu ameona kitu ajaiyo na maisha yake. Bwana asifiwe sana. Bwana asifiwe sana. Now, verse number 1 of Isaiah chapter 6 says, In the year that who died? King who? Who is King Uzziah? Acha ta tu ingeza scriptures zenye mtakagi kusoma. Who is King Uzziah? Second Chronicles chapter number 26 talks about King Uzziah. We will not go there, but I will just give you a, a short preview of what he is. King Uzziah is a king in Israel. King Uzziah is an awesome king. He's an awesome king. And God blesses him indeed and favors him indeed. And he's built machines. I mean, he's an engineer. He's, I think it's the first time that I've seen the word machines in the Bible. Eh, iko, kama ujuagi. Amuna fikiri ya iliguja nawa sewa juzi juzi. This guy built machines, ma, vitu makanon, za kurusha mamawe na nini. And his army was well equipped, ready for battle. Number two, he was a farmer. He was a great farmer. He produced a lot of food for the children of Israel. Hallelujah. Number three, he was awesome in everything that he did, and God blessed him. But one day, say one day, say one day, King Uzziah decides, Ata mimi, neza kwa kuhani. I can become a priest. So he goes into the temple of the Lord. I don't know why. Sijui. Mathiologians wata tuambia. I don't know why. He decides to go to the, to, the, to the temple. And he does the work of the high priest. Tries to burn incense. And the high priests, and 80 of the priests of the temple of God, come to him and tell King Uzziah, you have done what is wrong in the eyes of the Lord. And King Uzziah, zambi yake kubwa sana ni ali jam. He was angry. Haka uliza, hey, me and my awesomeness. Mimi, muna niambia nini? And immediately, immediately, leprosy came upon him from head to toe. Some of us know that story. From head to toe. And when Uzziah, Uzziah, King Uzziah saw that, he himself, the Bible says, he himself was eager. Yani aliji, he was eager to leave the temple. Yani ali feel, wa? Do you know what leprosy is? According to, when the, the, the children of Israel, according to them, leprosy was a disease of the unclean. Mm. chapter six. When you are considered unclean, you had leprosy. And when you had leprosy, you used to shout in the city, make way, unclean. And ulikuna shout, hey, make way, because I'm unclean. And you, you used to, people used to, walikuna kondokea. Why? Leprosy was considered contagious. Wana sana. Now, when Isaiah sees the Lord, verse number, seven, number five says, Woe to me, for I am a man of what? I told you to underline that word in Isaiah 64. I'm a man of unclean lips. What does a prophet use to prophesy? His what? His mouth. When he saw God, he realized something. Ikam teremusha. Ikam ha. Ikam fire nini? Ikam humble. An interesting thing. Go to Isaiah chapter number 5. Just before chapter number 6. Isaiah chapter number 5. Look at this. Verse number 8. Let's go to verse number 8. Just, just look at this. Isaiah chapter number 5, verse number 8. Tutapitia tuizo waraka raka. What to you who add houses to house and join field to field till no space is left and you live alone in the land. Go to verse number 11. Haraka raka to verse number 11. Woe to those who rise early in the morning to run after their drinks, who stay up late at night till they are inflamed with wine. Verse Go to verse number 18. Check it, check, check. This is Isaiah. 
speaking woes to people. Woe to those who draw sin along with cause of deceit, maconmen, and wickedness as their cut ropes. Go to verse number 20. Hey, Isaiah chapter number 5, verse number 20. Woe to those who call evil hey, and good, who put darkness for light and light for darkness, who put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. Go to verse number 21. Ziko tu hapo. Verse number 21. Woe to those who are wise in their own eyes and clever in their own sight. Go to verse number 22. Woe to those who are heroes at, drink, eh, tenor, at drinking wine and champions at what? Mixologists. Walianzia kitambo. Now after all that, after chapter number 5, declaring wars to people. Chapter number 6, verse number 5. What does I say Isaiah see? War to who? To me. The foundation of spiritual growth for every Christian is when you realize that you are nothing and you are a sinful person. And that you require Christ and you require his blood. Bwana sifa sana. The foundation of spiritual growth is to realize that in sin you are born. Amen. And that does not necessarily go away when you get born again. Ah, yeah. Hebrews chapter number 12, verse number 1. The idea is this. The Bible says, therefore, now that we are surrounded scripture, by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every throw off, everything that hinders, and what? And the sin that so easily entangles. Tell your neighbor, neighbor, sin entangles. Now, this is not something that occurs to you within life. This is, this is not something that occurs to you when you are on the road to, to heaven. It doesn't come at in a chungulie na kucheki at No. Sin is something that you have been born into. Sawa. Look at Romans chapter 7 verse 21. May the word of Lord, the Lord speak to you today. Wow. Romans chapter number 7. Uyu ni apostle Paul. Yeah. Check it out. Romans chapter 7. So I find this law at work. I, who? Paul. I find this law at work. When I want to do what? Yeah. What happens? The sin that so easily entangles is your sinful nature. Why is it called a nature? It is called a nature because you are born in sinful nature. No man David dali realize akasema in sin was I born, conceived. Ah, bwana sio sana. So guess what? Mimi si juu yako, mimi na juu yangu. Ile siku niliokoka, mimi sikusikia maguri nyerere, sikusikia ma vitu zili happen na lafu sijui nika. Mimi sikusikia hizo vitu. Actually, I felt nothing. Physically, me. Me aya. Nimeokoka. Oh. Awesome. Nikena nikakaa chini. There was nothing. Miss Juju yako, mimi najua juu yangu. Labda wewe you are stricken down by lightning. I don't know. But I want to guess 80%, 90% of you you are even surprised. Haya, hiyo ndio kuokoka. Ulisikia joto? Hey, bless God. We you are called. <laughs> ah, we <wait>, shia. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I want to bring to you an announcement. You were born in sin. The, the reason for redemption is so that your works, your obedience, is so that you, you and your giving, you, everything that you do as a Christian, what Pastor Francis was saying, is not by you. It is by grace that you are saved. And not only that, it is by grace that you live as a Christian. Ay. 
because of this reason, because we were born in sin, our best works, our best works are stained with impure motives, especially for us who are in the worship team. Leon itakafunga. Watajua leo venye mini no? Leon atakani yamke ndio wasewa chiki venye mina sabingi God. Eh? Motives, eh? By, by the way, God is not really con... Niseme? God judges the intent, the word, and the attitudes of the heart. Umu seta kama kuchapa hizo story. But wacha ni kuambia to preview. God is interested with why. Have you decided to do this? It is the attitude and the motive of your heart that causes you to be a sinner or causes you to do righteously. Bwana siwe sana. Wacha tugonge hapa kwa sababu many of us Christians wana tunafikiri yanga it is in the acts of righteousness that God judges us. Can I surprise you? Jeremiah chapter number 17 Verse number nine. Tuende tu. Si tuwa soma scripture. The heart. Ocha tu soma kila mtu. Zeme ni pasi. The heart is above. Cheki. The heart. Your heart is more deceitful than a con man. Your heart is more deceitful than 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 some some of our politicians. The heart is deceitful above all things. And what? Look at that. And what? In other words, hakuna dawa ya? Wacha venye muna imbanga vitu zingine hapa hivina sikia nini 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 dawa ya? There is no cure. No cure for the heart. Then he asked, who can understand it? I love verse 10. Aish. I love verse 10. Go to verse 10. Go to verse number 10. I, the Lord... Search the heart and examine what? <laughs> to reward a man according to his. Look at that. It's not the action that is being rewarded. It is the conduct with which you do the action that is being rewarded according to what his what? Deserve. Amen. <laughs> when prophet Samuel, alikuwa natafuta, alikuwa natafuta king. Akangalia kacheki firstborn wa Jesse akasema lazima ikuwe ni upse. Mazee ameunga. Mazee ni mrefu na anaka mazee kingly. God akamwambia eh eh. Wacha kuangalia hizo vitu. Mimi naangalia anga roho. Amen. That is not an excuse for you to dress skimply in church by the way. Ati si God ana judging you hati yangu na motive yangu eh eh eh. I can qualify what I'm saying. Mark chapter number 7. Hallelujah. It is, not, it is not what comes into the man that makes him unclean. It is what comes out of the man. Why? Because out of the what? Heart comes out. Evil desires. Sexual immorality. Hallelujah. So, Kwa roo yako, na roo yako ni inawongo, waga inakudanganya, waga inakusha umefanya poa, lakini kenya goda naangalia. Anangalia huu mse ya mwasha chache ni wanekane na pasi. Huu mse ya mekamu kusavu ni wanekane na pasi. And the Bible says, your reward imeishi ya hapo. Sinu kenya Christ alisema, reward yako imeishi ya hapo. Aliko nongi about praying and fasting. In Matthew chapter number 5, chapter number 6, chapter number 7. Chapter number 6 actually. Amen. Man. <laughs> because of this reason, our best works are stained with impure motives and imperfect performance before God. Now this is a very good thing. Why? If you come to understand that I cannot do it on my own accord. If you come to understand my obedience is impure before God. Just as it is. If you come to understand that I cannot save myself, as Pastor Francis was saying, if you come to understand I, can, I cannot save myself, 
My works cannot save me or give me a good standing with God. If you come to understand that thing, then you will understand that I need to pursue holiness. It is the only place where you come to understand that I cannot do it on my own. Then I need to pursue holiness. Hallelujah. Listen to this. We will never pursue holiness unless we see how unholy we are. Number two, we will never see how unholy we are unless we look at the holiness of God. Number one, let me repeat. We will never pursue holiness unless we see how unholy we are. Number two, we will never see how unholy we are unless we look to the holiness of God. Number three, we will never... Actually, it's just a continuation number two. We'll never see how unholy we are unless we look at the holiness of God instead of our own perceived holiness in comparison to the unholiness of our neighbor. We will never see how unholy we are unless we look at the holiness of God individually, unless we look at the holiness of God instead of our own perceived holiness in comparison to the unholiness of our neighbor's. Even though Kenya tunafanyaga church, ukisikia, especially believers, ukisikia mseme tenda thambi, unajua, ah, mini kosawa kumuliko. Yeah? Maze goda na nicheki kuliko venya na mche. Most of us compete in church. We are in a busy, frantic competition. I am, I'm coming to church so that I can pray. Ndiyo, wasewa one venya na umaga kuliko venya wanaomba. Therefore, God will approve me more. Amen. When you understand how unholy you are before a very holy God, then now you'll understand the place of redemption and what Jesus did. This is the gospel that we preach, that God looked down on a mess that I am, the mess that I am, and in his holiness decided to send someone who's morally perfect, Someone who is morally perfect. Someone who is as holy as he is. Who lived a holy life. Therefore, now that he is who he is, God himself, he died so that I can receive the holiness of God. Now, when I do what I'm doing, it is not I that does this. Yet it is Christ who does it in me. Hallelujah. It is not my righteousness that makes me have a right standing before God. It is the righteousness of the Christ who is in me. When God looks at me, he does not see my sin. He sees the righteousness of Christ inside my life. Then he says, I am in a right standing with you. He tells me, you are okay because Christ is doing it in your life. This is what redemption does to you. He, it pushes you from a place of a mess, place of unholiness, and not coming anywhere near to God, and pushes you to a place where you are acceptable. Therefore now, you can approach the throne of God with what? Confidence. That's, what, that's where your confidence comes from. Hallelujah. My, the immediate response to the redemption to a sinner is repentance. When Isaiah saw what he saw, when Isaiah saw what he saw, he said, woe to me. I, Aliona Apana, repent as I'm sorry. Last year, Harvest Conference, last year, I learned something from Pastor Francis. I will know that you have repented three, four months after saying I'm sorry. The immediate response to redemption as a sinner is repentance. The immediate response to redemption for a repentant heart is worship. And the immediate response to a worshiper is this. Here I am. Send me. Let me repeat that. The immediate response to redemption for a sinner, for a sinner, any sinner, any sinner, including who? Including when you are born again. The immediate response to redemption for a sinner is repentance. Say, God, I have sinned against you. I'm sorry. Forgive me. And teach me your ways. Holy Spirit, help me. Teach me your ways. Number two, the immediate response to redemption for a repentant heart is worship. The place of worship for every believer is a response of what God 
did for you. It's always a response. It has nothing to do with how good you are. It's nothing to do with your emotions. Now, it's a response to what God did for you. Hallelujah. And the immediate response to a worshiper is what Isaiah, go to verse number seven. Let's start from verse number six. I'm, uh, by the way. Go to verse number six. Verse number six, Isaiah six, verse number six. Then one of the Pharaohs flew from, to be, uh, go to verse number five. Vilanasama, woe to me. Woe to me, I cried, I am ruined, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I live among a people of unclean lips, and my eyes have seen the King, the Lord Almighty. Verse number six. Then one of the seraphs flew to me with a live coal in his hand, which he had taken with tongues from the altar. This is the redemption that we're talking about. Verse number seven. Go to verse number seven. With it he touched my mouth and said, See, this has touched your lips. Your guilt, what? Your what? Your what? Your guilt is taken away and your sin, what? Atoned for. Verse number eight. Then I heard a voice of the Lord saying, Now when the command of the Lord comes to you, when God asks you to do something, then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send? I and, and who will go for us? And I said, What? Here I am, send me, listen to me. If this command came before Isaiah chapter number one, Isaiah will be like I. Nani mungina na zenda, sidi mi peke yangu na zenda. Kwa ni kuna prophet mungina Israel, baide kuli kwa nayo, mika. Kwa ni kuna prophet mungina, sidi mi mi. So he would go in, in pride. So God had to teach him something. And if he went when immediately before he was touched and atoned for, if he went apo kwa yu process ya kuna sinyake. If he went, if he was sent at that time, Isaiah would say, no. Mimi, I am unclean. Please, tuma mtu mingine, tuma Mika. Akuko hivi. But Mika was prophesying the same time with Isaiah. Tuma Mika, akono kwa hivyo mimi, siwezi. But God had to do a surgery in his heart. And tell him, your sin has been atoned for. And the response, and the response, after he was, his sins was atoned for, was, I, do I even have a choice? After you have done this for me, do I even have a choice? Send me. Niko, niko number one kwa line, nitume. Nitume ata kama nenda kukufa, nitume. Nitume, because I know what you have done for me. Father, in the name of Jesus, how I pray that every single day we shall remember who we are in you. That we are adopted as sons, not by our own abilities, not by our own works, lest we should boast. But we have been adopted as sons, and we have been made holy, simply because of the grace of God that has been given to us. How I pray, Jesus, that this reality shall continue being enlightened in our hearts every single moment we live our lives. How, oh God, that you loved us that you sent your son Jesus Christ he who atoned for my sin the wrath of God was satisfied through you Jesus so that I can be able to stand here and preach so that I can be able to go and serve God the wrath of God was satisfied it's not because I'm gifted in any way it's not because God you have even anointed me in any way oh God it's because of your grace Lord that I'm able to stand Lord, I pray in the name of Jesus that the same thing, O oh God, shall be seen in every one of us who is seated here today. And that, God, we shall worship you knowing that there is none like you. Worshipping you knowing, O oh God, surely that you are the only one who could be able to do what you did on Calvary. Jesus, be glorified, be lifted and exalted. We thank you for you redeemed us. We thank you for you redeemed us, Lord. We thank you, O oh God, for you redeemed. You, 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 God's wrath came upon you, O oh Jehovah. And now we are who we are, adopted as sons. Simply because of what you have done for us. Be glorified and be magnified. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. Give the Lord a clap of praise.